I'm coming actually from the Dalle Molle Institute for Artificial Intelligence. So actually, I'm not really a, a telecom person. Uh, and my main um, focus of research is on uh, swarm robotics, uh, uh, combinatorial optimization, and also bio-inspired uh, uh, networking. You will see later why actually uh, today I'm here uh, presenting uh, something about uh, optimal relay node placement in uh, wireless sensor networks. You will see why this is related to my research in uh, Swarm Robotics. Uh, the talk is going to be uh, done in two parts. I will give a very general overview of the field, which is actually uh, very extensive. Uh, and then in the second part, I will show uh, a work that we have been recently done. Um, the idea is, apart from presenting my work, is also to show you what kind of methodologies people is using um, uh, in, this, uh, in this field. So let's start defining uh, the problem. Uh, the problem by itself is quite, uh, is quite simple. Uh, we have a set of nodes uh, that can be placed ad hoc to improve network functionality and performance. The idea is usually we have a sense of network. Uh, if you have a lot of nodes in the network, it might be a, a very challenging uh, task to actually define the positions of the node uh, in an optimal way in order to optimize uh, network uh, response. So the idea is I have my network and then I have available uh, a subset of, let's say, additional nodes that can be used for uh, some special purposes. So uh, the question we need to answer, uh, like in this simple example, yeah, these are sensor nodes, these are base stations, uh, and then these red ones are relay nodes that we might place additionally, uh, in this case, actually to improve uh, network throughput and uh, the level uh, reduce uh, congestion. But okay, in general, what we have to answer the question is where do we put these nodes? Uh, to answer this question, first we need to ask ourselves what do we want to um, optimize and which role these nodes should be uh, uh, playing in the network. Uh, the scenarios we can uh, think of and also is like when we want to deploy this, uh, these nodes. The idea is, um, for instance, uh, once we have deployed the network, uh, we want to improve, let's say, the, 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 the overall throughput which is generated by the network, or uh, we want to face events like uh, uh, energy uh, depletion of a node, so we would like to actually uh, put something in that area in order to overcome the problems related to these uh, energy depletion uh, issues. Or think a situation where we use a network uh, for tracking dynamic events. If we could actually bring relays uh, in a specific position uh, in order to optimize network response while the network is tracking a dynamic event, we can actually boost uh, network performance. Uh, think about the situation about like uh, surveillance, for instance. Um, in general, uh, what are the, the purposes? So uh, what do we want to optimize of relay node placement? Uh, for sure, we would like to maximize uh, network lifetime. Like the example I was saying, uh, you want to try to reduce overall the uh, depletion uh, of energy of all uh, uh, the sensors. Or we can do, for instance, a region-wise energy efficiency improvement. Again, like in the case of tracking something dynamically, we want to actually help the network in a certain specific uh, areas. Or we we might want to do some sort of load balancing, which is still related somehow to uh, energy uh, optimization. Another obvious uh, uh, criterion is uh, uh, provisioning of connectivity. Again, if a node uh, gets a failure or gets energy depleted, or we need an, an increased connectivity in a certain area, so we want to actually bring connectivity, or even when the case, uh, usually uh, we might deploy the network at random, then some areas might be disconnected. So we want to overcome this problem later, bringing some relay nodes uh, ad hoc. In more general sense, we, could, uh, we would like to do some local global optimization of throughput and uh, latencies. Or 
if you use these relay nodes, uh, not only as relays, but also as sensor nodes, uh, they can use actually to improve the coverage and in general, the overall sensing performance of the network. Uh, generally speaking, um, node placement uh, is a subclass of a network design problems. It can be seen as in static or a dynamic way. Uh, here you see, in the case of a static node placement, you might have different deployment methodology, can be controlled, so I decide where to place the relays, or can be more like a random. And this is actually, might be useful and effective when you have very large networks, so solving the optimal problem might be actually uh, too difficult. Uh, the optimization objectives are those are mentioned, so covering, uh, coverage, connectivity, network longevity, uh, data fidelity. Uh, and also we should decide, as I said, what's the role of these additional nodes. Uh, don't get mistaken by the name relay. As I said, a relay can be also uh, a sensor, can be a data aggregator, uh, can, uh, can forward data, can, can do several things. So we have to decide what to do. The bad side of the story is actually that optimal static placement needs, in principle, some very good knowledge regarding several uh, important network aspects. Because if you want to de devise an optimal placement, in principle, we should know positions of the nodes, their distances, which are related, of course, to uh, positions, uh, the radio ranges. Uh, we should know if it is line of sight or omnidirectional antennas. Uh, the link qualities, that means taking into account all the aspects related to MAC and to the uh, interference. And also, last but not least, also the traffic path. Uh, we'll see that actually most of the work that is currently done from the side of optimal definition of these problems uh, mostly neglect uh, most of this aspect and just use like a simple disk model. Um, the placement can be static or can be uh, dynamic. Dynamic means when the network is actually running. Of course, to do this, you need uh, proper monitoring uh, to uh, check what's going on and to respond to certain events like, again, uh, energy uh, depletion. Approaches can be centralized or uh, distributed. Uh, centralized means you have all the knowledge, you calculate the optimal, the, 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 the positions, and then uh, you actually uh, position uh, the nodes. The distributed, actually, the, the network is calculating this. You understand that this is a more uh, difficult story. Uh, I will focus. Uh, on the, on the centralized and static aspects, which are always quite difficult. Um, let me come back to the original uh, topic, why I'm here. Uh, I, I do swarm robotics, uh, so uh, actually now mobile robotics uh, is like, is a reality. We have a lot of mobile robots around, and these guys, uh, they need to stay in touch. We have multiple information flows that are actually exchanged. They are uh, uh, real sensor actuator uh, networks, and definitely we can uh, exploit the mobility uh, of, the, of the nodes uh, uh, to, position, to, to, to make mobile relays. Here I'm just showing, uh, this is sort of advertisement, um, what kind of robots we have and we deal with. So to get you the, the, the idea of why in the end we need uh, to solve uh, this kind of problems. We have robots that can uh, climb, grasp, they can move on the floor, uh, they can fly, and all together they have to cooperate uh, to solve the task uh, of uh, interest. Actually this video won the, the AAAI video award so you can see it uh, here, um, but okay, I'm not going to spend much time well, just to show that we have flying robots that can attach to the ceiling, and all these guys have uh, multiple network interfaces, they have GPS, they have self-localization um, uh, interfaces, so we can actually tackle uh, node positioning in a dynamic way. Um, also, uh, I mean, also interesting, uh, 
uh, we have a project uh, about the mixes war for search and rescue where we have uh, humans flying robots and dogs all equipped with network interfaces uh, and we have a centralized planet that needs to gather information about these guys and then plan their trajectories uh, in order to optimize search uh, effectiveness uh, but definitely the idea is to use uh, the flying robots as mobile relays uh, so uh, to actually improve uh, in this case really throughput and delay because we need to gather a lot of data including uh, video uh, video images so let's go back to the uh, to the main issue uh, there are two excellent reference papers with survey so if you're interested in the topic uh, please look uh, uh, at these two guys. Uh, in the following, uh, I will show some result, uh, uh, some data that are taken from the UNIS and, and Akaya uh, paper. People have been considering uh, several different scenarios. Uh, um, to make like a taxonomy, uh, there is a, a large group of work that is considered a single tired, and another uh, large group of works that consider two tired. Uh, networks. Basically, the idea is that uh, here you see a, a two-tiered network. A single-tiered network is, is a normal uh, flat network, uh, while the two-tiered uh, basically uh, a sensor nodes only for words it sends information to a relay node or to a base station. So we have here uh, an overlay uh, network which is used to uh, forward the data coming from uh, from the sensors. Another uh, uh, objective in given that we're considering either single tire or two tire network uh, is uh, considering connected or survival networks plus some additional requirements like energy uh, optimization. Uh, in, in the case of connected networks, uh, basically the relays are used to ensure that each sensor network, each sensor node is connected with the base station, possibly through a bidirectional path. Uh, while uh, in the survival case, uh, relays uh, needs to uh, uh, are used to connect the sensor network with more than one base stations, or through two or more nose disjoint bidirectional paths to the same base station. When in the case, you have one single uh, base stations. This, in a sense, to guarantee some survivability uh, of the network. And this is, of course, uh, where the network is. Uh, um, uh, uh, each sensor node can actually send its data to a base station. Uh, as I said, there is a lot of work in this field. Um, the large majority of the works, they aim to optimality. It means what they do is actually they define a mixed integer program, program or an ILP formulation. And the, 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 the challenge is precisely to make an effective uh, formulation. Uh, mostly they consider a sim simple disk model for wireless. So no really Mac or interference are taken into account. We have links is there or not inside my range. Uh, do not really take into account the impact of different traffic patterns. We know that actually they have an impact. Uh, assume, of course, no node positions and distances. Otherwise, you can solve the problem. Uh, the main focus is on 2D, but actually recently there is like a, a, an impetus of work in uh, solving uh, uh, 3D uh, scenarios. Uh, the relays uh, are considered through the coarse grained discretization of the space. It means that you consider like 2D cells uh, of certain sides where the relay can be uh, placed. Uh, the bad news is the basic formulation for the connectivity problem, uh, okay, uh, there is like a sort of issue about the radius, sensing radius and the radio range radius. So this is the simplest case, is actually NPR. It was proven by Linux U in 1999. And actually the same authors have designed uh, a standardization scheme that has been the basis for most subsequent work. So basically they reduce the problem as a sort of uh, uh, multicast standard tree uh, problem that can, is amenable uh, to theoretical analysis and to study uh, the complexity and to derive approximation arguments. I'll give you here some, some results. Uh, just to give an idea, first, how hard is uh, 
solving these kind of problems uh, and uh, what people is uh, actively doing in this field. So for the one third connectivity problem, again with uh, radio range equal to the uh, uh, sense, uh, sensing range, the best results are randomized 2.5 approximation uh, by breeding others and the deterministic which is relatively fast three approximation algorithm by Cheng and uh, others. Okay. An approximation algorithm uh, uh, basically gives you the guarantees that uh, at the distance, in this case, basically the solution that's going to provide is at most uh, three times the value of the, uh, of the optimum. For one tired connectivity problem, uh, no, sorry, this is two tired connectivity problem, uh, the best results are, oh, all right. I made a mistake. Uh, for the two tired, the, the situation anyway is much more uh, um, challenging, uh, and people have been considering. You, you can think that the two tired, the, the role of the relay uh, uh, nodes can be quite different. Uh, you can use as an aggregators for wording, uh, cluster heads. Uh, so actually, the situation is more <coughs> complex. It's a lot of work, uh, and the best approximation is a sort of seven approximation. So it's much, much worse than uh, the one tired uh, connectivity uh, problem. When you include more complex problems, the approximation gets worse and worse. Uh, for the survival problem, actually the best result is a 10 approximation uh, algorithms. So you see that actually it's very difficult to solve these problems because a 10 approximation means at most you are 10 times more than, 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 than the optimum, which is, uh, I do computer optimization, uh, is not really satisfactory, but in the sense gives the really the idea how difficult is this class of problems. Um, and the other problem is that in spite of using quite simplified modeling, uh, computational times really go exponentially with the size of the problem. And then people is just considering networks of limited size, uh, 50, 100 nodes, and you have computation times that explode to 500, 1,000 uh, seconds in the best cases. So this means also you cannot really use this in an online uh, setting where you would like to gather information, solve, and maybe dynamically, like I would do, uh, I would like to do with my robots, uh, uh, allocate the positions of the flying robots. Here, I'm just reporting, just to give you an idea of uh, how many variations of this problem has been considered. This is from the Akaya um, uh, paper. Uh, basically, you see the different applications here uh, from health, surveillance, uh, uh, biomedical, in the space, this is 2D and 3D. Uh, if the deployment is deterministic or random, so deterministic, you actually calculate it. Precisely random, you calculate certain distributions to uh, deploy the, uh, the sensor nodes. Um, what kind of uh, node type you have, and the primary and the secondary uh, objective. So you see you have natural lifetime, coverage, data fidelity, uh, minimum relay count, and then you always try to often to uh, pair a secondary uh, objective in order to guarantee, for instance, connectivity and uh, minimization of energy, maximization throughput, and connectivity, uh, and so on. And okay, here is like a continuation. Uh, so you see actually, this is, it was a paper of uh, 2008, and just for this subclass of the problems, you 54 papers, so actually there are actually hundreds of papers related uh, to, this, uh, to this topic. Uh, so uh, now I would like to present our recent work in this field um, to give you, as I said, a bit the flavor of what kind of methodologies uh, have, been, uh, uh, have been used. Uh, our approach is based on uh, uh, Basically, we define a mixed integer problem, which is a variant of multi commodity flow formulation. And the, what makes the difference with respect to previous work, in a sense, uh, is that we, we try to, to account for the, some specific aspects of wireless environment. The wireless environment that is there, we should take it in somehow in the formulation uh, as much as we, uh, as we can. Uh, the objective is to optimize throughput and delay. I have in mind robotic networks, so really I want to stream data as fast uh, as possible. 
And of course, somehow connectivity and energy uh, comes as a side effect. Uh, we aim to a flexible formulation that we can solve effectively. So, should be solved in a few seconds. And flexible means we can try to tune several parameters in order to decide uh, what kind of optimization we are uh, doing according to our uh, needs. So the output of the system is the number of relays that are effectively useful for the system, uh, their positions, and the routing paths that we can use for, to actually forward the data flows. Um, as most of people uh, have been doing, we use uh, 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 a grid, we partition the space uh, in a two grid, in a two uh, grid. We use a quite fine, selectable uh, grid-based uh, partitioning. And uh, here uh, you see an example, this is the original network, this is the grid, the resolution, so the distance is selectable, the large, the more fine, grain is the, the, the grid, more difficult is the problem. These are all candidate positions for the uh, relays. Um, we do some optimization, which is, this is a basic one. Basically, we calculate a convex hull uh, of the system because uh, this is actually the envelope that should contain uh, the relays. And also, uh, we have implemented some uh, adaptive grid resolution trying to actually to increase the resolution where, uh, where it is uh, needed. Uh, okay, here there is some mathematics. Uh, uh, basically, you start with a uh, direct graph that represents the, the, the sensor network. We have a set of sensor nodes as a set of base stations and a set of relay uh, positions. And a link cost factor plus a data generation factor. Express, whose like rate data generation is expressed in uh, flow uh, units. The decision variables are uh, of two uh, types. The flow variables that actually denote the amount of flow that's going to be uh, uh, transmitted to a link IJ, and the binary positional variables that will define the position of a relay in a grid. Basically, if this variable uh, is one, that grid position is be, uh, will be occupied by uh, uh, a relay. It is zero. Uh, okay, I'm not going to go to details, but uh, uh, the associated minimum cost flow for relay placement looks like this. Basically, we have uh, the flow balance uh, equation. Here, we consider that uh, the base stations uh, are sync uh, for data. And here, uh, we actually define the binary variables for the relays. This is unconstrained. So in principle, you can put as many um, uh, relays as we want. Uh, so we need to actually to add constraints and penalties uh, to make the problem uh, what we want, and also to take into account uh, some aspects related to the wireless uh, environment. Uh, the first thing is actually adding a constraint, uh, limiting the maximum numbers of relays that uh, we can use. This is the maximum. But also what we do is to add in the objective function a penalty basically telling, hey, if you don't need to use all the k relays, if uh, K minus N are enough, uh, the others don't use it because actually they, they're not going to provide any uh, optimization. Another constraint, we want to limit the locally circulating flows uh, taking into account the nominal link uh, capacity. We don't want to override the, capa the local capacity uh, of the network and also we limit the maximum routing in degree. So it means uh, since we are uh, calculating at the same time the routing paths, we don't want a node to have uh, more than certain numbers of incoming uh, data flows. Uh, this is okay. Uh, it's quite complex how do we, do, we, we make this. Uh, <clears throat> but this is basically to avoid uh, con local congestion. So taking into account a bit a bit at least, the uh, characteristics of OYS environment. Finally, we had the penalty factor in, uh, in the objective to force the generation of minimally interfering uh, flows, which is actually this. Um, it's a complex calculation, I'm not uh, explain it, but in the end, the objective looks like uh, a minimization of the sum of the flows, 
uh, a minimization of the, uh, let's say, uh, redundant use of uh, uh, um, relays and a factor that favors uh, why, uh, wireless disjoint paths in, uh, in the definition of the writing paths. Um, as I said at the beginning, we need to know positions, link cost, and other things. Uh, we assume that uh, you, we have a link quality uh, estimator. Basically, that would take into account the MAC aspects and uh, the interference aspects. Uh, we define actually the link cost function, which is what is going to be minimized through the flows, uh, as one plus uh, weight of the link quality estimators. So basically, the idea is uh, WC will weight the relative importance of op count versus link uh, reliability. You might ask, how you call compute this? OK, in our case, uh, we developed the novel analytical model uh, for the unslotted CSMA into 2.15.4 that we use actually in our experiments. But also, we are finalizing the development of a novel fully distributed protocol, which is based on machine learning and support, support vector machine, uh, which is very effective and very uh, impressed by the results to actually make the system learning autonomously about the qualities. Uh, quickly, an experimental evaluation, we consider a lot of scenarios. Uh, number of sensor nodes from 50 to 225, base station from 12 to uh, 56, uh, different traffic generation loads, uh, and basically we generated 1,500 different instances with different topological properties. So uniform or some uh, kind of like uh, different type of clusterings to reflect possible networks uh, that are in real life scenarios. Uh, we use CIPLEX for solving the MIP, and uh, the performance were assessed using simulation, using TOSIM. Uh, and the collation tree protocol, which is distributed with tiny uh, OS. And also we compare with an MST heuristics uh, of the guys that actually proved uh, that uh, this kind of problems are uh, NP hard. I'm almost done. Uh, okay, here you see the, uh, the effectiveness of the model, so the static uh, routing paths compared to the uh, routing paths that are built adaptively by CTP. CTP is using uh, is based on uh, EXT, so uh, probing and dynamically building uh, the, uh, uh, the link quality estimation. And this is the cumulative and empirical community distribution function. Uh, you see, actually, it's a very wide, uh, significant difference uh, between uh, the performance. It was quite impressive because the, 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 uh, our routes are uh, static. Uh, this is for relay placement. We compared, actually, uh, the naked packet delivery ratio with the relay placement suggested by the uh, minimum spanning tree heuristic and our model, and again, the, the difference are uh, statistically significant. All right, escape. And just, just to give you an idea of the CPU time, this is for uh, to consider uh, networks of 200 nodes uh, using different uh, resolutions for radio range. Uh, this is the cure for the, the finest resolution, three meters. This is for the uh, seven meters. Of course, there's a large difference in computation. Uh, but with, adaptive, with our adaptive system, we can get, in practice, the same performance of uh, three meter resolution, uh, but uh, with order 10 seconds in most of the instances to solve the model, which is what we want. Something can be computed in a uh, very short time. So to conclude, uh, the renewal present problem has a wide field of applicability, um, and especially from my point of view, at least uh, in, the, in the more per pervasive availability of mobile robotic uh, sensors. A large bulk of work uh, is there. People have been trying so many different uh, scenarios. Uh, the problem is that optimal approaches still suffer from reduced computational scalability uh, and from the fact that they use quite simplified wireless models. So it's not clear when you really port this on a real environment how they would uh, in perform in practice. Uh, from my point of view, it's very important to have robust models for link qualities and also positional uncertainties uh, should be uh, considered because this idea we know precisely where a node is 
together with the problem that we don't have precisely in quality estimations can uh, really affect uh, the, the final uh, performance of the 